to the Club Knitting Podcast. My name is Caitlin, and this is a podcast where I share what I'm knitting, <laughs> what I'm crafting, and where I show you glimpses into my life as a school-based occupational therapist. I'm filming this during the first week of September, and so even though it's not officially autumn, in my mind, it already is. So today what I want to do is wrap up some of my summer projects and kind of get an idea of what I want to plan um, to make during the autumn and winter. I've got this sewing machine that I want to put to good use today, so let's get started. I'm starting off by fixing a mistake in a current sewing project. I am going to make a video about it. I, I say that and it sounds like I'm saying it with a question mark because it's still a very tentative project and so I don't know how much I really want to share in the event that I end up deciding to completely abandon it. But as I've been practicing my sewing, I've been feeling ready to try something more complicated than just sewing rectangles together. So I am knitting a dress. It is a very particular kind of dress and the pattern calls for gussets underneath the arms just to help with the fit of the sleeves. And although they say measure twice, cut once, I'm kind of a measure eight times, cut three times kind of sewer. I'm not confident in my ability to get the right cut of my fabric the first time around. But even after all that, the sleeves that I'm sewing are abysmally too small. I measured and did everything right, but forgot about the seam allowance. So with all that frustrating mess, it's gonna take a lot more work to do this project than I originally anticipated, and I anticipated it taking a lot of work. But this is all just a part of the process of learning, and it's gonna make me a much better sewer in the end than if I had never made this mistake in the first place. I have finished um, spinning all of the pink fiber that I had um, and it turned out like this. This is 100% Cordale wool in a kind of cotton candy pink color um, but towards the bottom of my spindle this is what my spinning looked like at the beginning of the process when I was still figuring stuff out um, and up towards the top this is where I'm at right now. So you can see this is much more um, smoother, consistent compared to the stuff down here. Um, I'm still parking and drafting. I have to, you know, spin, stop, draft out, spin, stop, draft. Um, I haven't gotten to the point where I can just drop the spindle and let it go and um, draft as I go along, but eventually I'll get there. I just have to figure out how to get this off my spindle so I can use the spindle um, for the lavender yarn that I have. Same fiber, um, same quantity, um, but clearly I have more that I need to learn about spinning and do a little more research on. And in the end, eventually, I want to um, ply this pink yarn with the lavender yarn together um, and just see how it turns out. Uh, with the wide variety in just skill level clearly is going to make it look very interesting when it turns out in the end. I have no expectation for what it's going to look like in the end. So far I would say I'm officially one third of the way done with my very first spinning project but as far as my very first ever yarn um, I'm pretty proud of it and had a really fun time making it. Next up on my to-do list finish the final baby sweater for my co-workers. This is the Pontanelle Rib Baby Pullover by Reynolds Yarn. There's also a cardigan version. At the Yarn Shop Hop, I got a bunch of other yarn that I was going to use for this intended baby sweater. But unfortunately, as it sometimes turns out, it was a project that just did not want to be made that way. And so I knew I had to change something. So one day I just decided to completely change directions. I tried a new pattern and I got myself some yarn from my stash from another project that did not go as planned and I had to abandon it. But this yarn and this pattern just synced up so beautifully 
And overall, it's been a very smooth process to make this baby sweater. What I love about this pattern is that it has a little ruffly hem, both on the sleeves and at the bottom edge of the sweater. And the particular lace stitch in the pattern not only gives it this sort of delicate quality to the overall garment, but it kind of makes it stretchy. The stitches naturally kind of want to collapse together, but even so, there is plenty of room to stretch it out. It's nighttime now uh, on a different day, um, but I wanted to wrap this up by sharing some of my knitting goals for, um, for the fall and moving into winter. I am still in the process of knitting my J sweater and the Handsome Chris pullover for my brother. But since those projects are taking me quite a while, I kind of do want to try out uh, or, you know, make up a really, you know, relatively quick and simple project um, just to kind of keep my momentum going because I've been kind of slogging along on all of these projects um, for a very long time. So I could use a little um, palette cleanser, if you will. And what comes to mind is some of my old yarn that's still in my stash um, that I got the last time I was in Portland, Maine from my favorite yarn shop over there. And as I explained in a previous episode, um, there's a lot of significance to this yarn because it's, um, it's from Maine where I went to grad school. The colorway was called Presque Isle, Presque Isle where I did one of my clinical rotations. And the color is this true Mainer blueberry blue um, that I saw on several houses um, while I was living there. But I can't decide whether I want to do what I originally was intending to do with the yarn and make a sort of hobbit-ish um, seed stitch um, like sweater vest. I don't know why a seed stitch particularly came to mind kind of resembling blueberries might be the idea but Hella Knitwear um, which is a Scandinavian word I think it's Swedish or Norwegian um, doesn't have the same meaning as the word in English would uh, just came out with an adorable shrug and I can't think of the name right now but I'll put it right over here and so I can't decide whether or not to make a chunky blue sweater vest or a chunky blue little shrug. So if you have a particular preference, um, let me know in the comments. But otherwise, that's kind of it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Um, and check out Homebody Beads. She just came out with these chickens with boots, um, and I adore them so much. And if you have the desire and means, I've included links um, just to help support the emergency efforts with uh, the flash flooding in Libya and the recent earthquake in Marrakesh, Morocco. So take care, stay safe, and stay cozy as the seasons change. Bye.